Hi, Tamil. Thanks for coming on the show again. Thank you. Now, in this week's Bankers Trust, you discuss the negative real interest rates. Can you explain what they are? Uh, the purchasing power of money is going down, and with rising rates, banks are also, uh, you know, hiking their deposit rates. Despite that, if you see, actually, you end up seeing your hundred rupee uh, less than hundred rupee, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, something like that. So high inflation eats into the power of money or your purchasing power. simply put that's what the negative interest rate that's what the regime we are going through in the past also when it, inflation was high we have seen that and this is a global phenomenon at this point of time but but you don't use the deposit rates as a peg you talk about a uh, one year treasury as a benchmark can you explain the rationale behind that okay well this is what uh, dr raghuram rajan former reserve bank of india governor mentioned in fact he is one person uh, one rbi governor who continuously dealt with uh, what should be the negative inter- what should be the ideal interest rate it should he said it should be between 1.5 to 2 percentage point 2 percent uh, real interest rate not negative and how do what should be the benchmark as a conference call with the analyst he said ideal benchmark should be one year treasury bill which means one year down the line uh, the inflation expectation versus one year treasury bill now what it is for instance uh, uh, reserve bank of india has picked the um, uh, inflation projection for 2023 as of now 6.7% and if you see the one year treasury bill then you see that it's a, it's a negative our purchasing power to that extent is being cut that's it so it's it's not my invention i just quoted dr raj now, now this is interesting because you talk about the 6.7% projection from rbi the target for inflation targeting regime was 4% and now the fm has come out and said and you mentioned it in your column as well that she's contended with 6% do you think inflation targeting has failed and you do mention that it should not go the frbm way at least we have a Quote unquote flexible inflation targeting. There is no. Uh, it's a, the flexibility is there. And what is the flexibility? Four percent is the midpoint, and the band is two percentage point on either side. So yeah. between two percent and six percent. Now, thanks to COVID, uh, you know, our focus has all all along been in the past two years. It's on a six percent, not on four percent. Forget two percent. So uh, in the past and um, under the law. if reserve bank of india has not been able to contain inflation within the flexible inflation targeting that is even within 6% for three quarters in a row it owes an explanation to the government so in the past it happened during the covid year but uh, at the first phase of pandemic i said but that time reserve bank of india did not uh, give any explanation because the data collection was not accurate because of the covid uh, various kind of law Mm-hmm. now as we speak and um, uh, as we speak um, uh, from since january 6 months inflation has been over 6% and we presume that and reserve bank of india also uh, projected that uh, in the first 9 months it will be over 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 6% so which means reserve bank of india this time would need to give an explanation why it has failed so that's in rbi domain i'm not privy to it but as you rightly um, pointed out it looks like that we have shifted the goal post it's not 4% it's 6% and we are happy if it's contained within 6% now uh, i'm taking you off topic because in a recent statement and we're talking about governor statements only right the governor talked about soft landing for the economy so uh, yes. are we uh, miscalculating the extent of the crisis from the extent that we are facing a twin balance sheet crisis it we may face it in the future so what do you think about that soft landing statement so look uh, governor has to say it this way i mean uh, and um, um, what he is saying that we are flexible we would respond and we have every weapons in our armory uh, having said that i think everything boils down to oil uh, yes we have good monsoon and we have yes uh, probably the the worst in um, in terms of inflation is behind us which is two months back we have seen uh, close to 8% uh it will now over around 7 or even it will go down further uh, and uh, when he is talking about soft landing if you are presuming that there will be no more rate hike i don't believe that 4.9% rate uh, cannot it can't be the uh, policy rate so august between august 2nd and 4th the next npc meeting 
I'll be surprised if, it, if, if the rate is not raised by 50 basis point at least. So that will take it to 4.9 to 5.4. And then we need to see how much, two more, 25 basis point each. Is it 5.9% we look at it? We do not know. But certainly uh, we would see rate hikes going ahead. And what he meant probably is this, uh, what we had seen in the first quarter, there are two successive high. One is within the, at the MPC meeting and one is ahead of the meeting off cycle. So we would not see that kind of thing. So his market is, will be much more prepared. Uh, it will be like confined to MPC meeting. Uh, and that's how life will go on. But there is no escape from rate hike. Uh, we have to, to contain inflation. So I'm taking you a bit more off topic again. What are the implications of the rupee trade for the RBI and for the government in general? Uh, well, uh, you know, my first reaction was I was I was wondering what why this is like this because there is a country which is a current account deficit uh, and uh, capital account convertibility is not there. So who will be interested to trade with us uh, in in our currency? That's the question. Uh, but. Then I think when I, I read the fine la, the, the, the between the lines, I think it's an extremely well thought of policy. Uh, a, it's an enabling condition. Uh, so the smaller economies, uh, our neighbors, they, they will definitely, they would not have any problem uh, you know, doing us uh, with rupee. Uh, it talks about invoicing rupee and trade in rupee. Yeah. But the larger issue is, I think it's the oil, you know, the the Indo Russia uh, India India Russia uh, the rupee ruble trade and uh, mm -hmm. that will ensure that that uh, if you remember uh, in 1950 1950s we had the rupee ruble uh, pact uh, which continued till 2005 mm -hmm. and it did not work out it had to be scrapped because uh, Indian import was far higher than export so there was too much of rupee uh, lying with RBI. Yeah. Um, that's why it had to be scrapped. But this time it has given an escape, it, it's given a, given a way out. It says that the excess money with the trade partner that can be used for multiple purposes, including buying government bond, treasury bills, so on and so forth. So I think this will enable uh, the rupee ruble trade, uh, which is not spelt out there. Um, also with um, Iran, if you see, there was a time when Iran was under sanction. Uh, there was a, a, a kind of rupee trade happened and Yuko Bank was the conduit for that. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, this is the very smart way of uh, avoiding the sanction. And other important part is this, um, you know, um, uh, China has already started. Uh, the Chinese currency has already started uh, uh, quite a few years now. So we may see a situation if we do not do this, Rashkia might say, look, uh, there's no, there, there's no way of we can do a rupee uh, trade. Let's do, uh, let's do in, in Chinese currency. So mm -hmm. if you want to prevent that, already you open a window. And as we grow and as we become a 5 trillion economy, then probably we'll gather more strength and uh, more and more countries will be, I mean, rupee will never be a reserve currency or hard currency in the, in the near future, but definitely people will get more confidence. About that. So, all in all, I think it's a very smart move. Uh, but do you think the RBI will relax its uh, restrictions on how much foreign investment can come into government securities and treasuries? It has been years now. We have been trying to get into the global bond index, which has not happened. But even in the current scenario, the kind of money which the FII can put in in the, in the government bond, it's not been used. Okay. So there is a scope there. Okay. There is, a, there is already a scope existing there. There is absolutely no issue. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. We hope to have you back again soon. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. That lets success so high. I will achieve. I will fly high. I am the eye in SBI. I'm backed by the nation.
nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.